you got you got a podcast and a and a Facebook group. I think you said we're gonna put your Facebook group. You're recording, by the way. And okay. yes. So um, if you want to introduce yourself, if, if I can introduce you, if you'd like as well, whichever you want. This is Dan Perion, by the way, guys. Hello, guys. All right. So if you guys have, I think one of the things that made Zan famous is the Alabaster Girl. So this book mm. is very sought after. Uh, I have a copy of it. This one's mine. You're going to have to buy it from Zan if you want a copy as well. So uh, Coach Corey Wayne um, recommends Zan Perion. Um, he's pretty much, uh, when it comes to dating and social dynamics, Zan is somebody that leaves women better off than when he finds them. He's somebody mm. that really cares about women and he shares that experience. Uh, with them he'll like co-create it with them and he pretty much has his own ideas and his own get me way of making all women his women and having them respond in a way that you get me because there's millionaires out there believe it or not that they don't know how to talk to girls like they they don't know what to do so zan is an authority on um, pretty much when it comes to all that i'm one of his students you get me and i i look up to zan Perion. you get me this is going to be stuff that i use when i'm older when I get married <laughs> or you get me when I have like a serious relationship and I mean, he's wildly successful. If you guys have read the game by Neil Strauss, he was in there as well. Um, uh, it's a great book. Uh, I introduced to us to a lot of guys. So uh, anything. It's interesting enough. I was, uh, yes. you know about the, the new app clubhouse. You mm -hmm. heard of that? I was on clubhouse last night with Neil Strauss. Wow. We, they were running a room and we haven't, I haven't talked to him in quite a long time. We start talking about some of the old days, you know, when the game came out and there was a, a lot of listeners on that, on that call. I'm just going to put my headset on. Maybe it's maybe better for sound for you guys. Sure. There, now try talking. And I'm not sure if you can hear me yet. Yeah, I can hear you perfectly fine. Yeah, that's good. So yeah, so it was, a, so it was interesting to reconnect with them again last night on Clubhouse after all these years. And how you taught him pretty much how to get better, and he wrote about you, and you were one of the teachers. <laughs> well, right. I, I, in an indirectly, I guess you could say that. Yeah, I was kind of like answering a lot of questions on the old forums back then, you know, back before Tinder and all this online swiping stuff. Yeah. What do you think makes you different from like some of the other guys, like from your perspective? Because I chair like you're one of the titans when it comes to you get me being able to really when it comes to really building real authentic relationships with women. And then you get me, it's usually their friends, friends that will come to you. And that one, that story about that one girl, how she was, it was three women, all right? You're always cheeky, you're always smiling, looking away. <laughs> and there was one that not everybody paid attention to to her. And there was this one guy we got, had, got, had got in the bar and he said very rude things to her. And he was just pretty much one of those like alpha alpha males. And it's just like, that's, that's like, that's weird, dude. Like you're, I mean, you have to appreciate all women. And well, you, you know, the way the night with her afterwards. Yeah. The way I look at it is, um, I, I have a lot of empathy for the downtrodden, I guess you could say, you know, what the worst quality someone can have is to be judgmental. So a, for a woman to be judgmental of men or judgmental of other women or of men to be judgmental, um, it, to me, it's, it's just something I just can't abide in my presence. So for instance, if, if a girl says, well, I don't like that girl over there. Well, why don't you, how, you don't know her. How can you say that? You know, and, and there's something in me that rises up against that, I, I guess you could say. And so that was that, that scene that's in my book, three girls on a couch. And I was talking to the near, nearby one and she was overweight. And this guy came up to me and says, Dan, what are you doing talking to this girl? <laughs> She's fat. And I, you know, I thought, who does that? Nobody, nobody looked at their little baby in their arms, a little girl in their arms. No father looked down and said, I hope she grows up to be unloved and, and picked on and overweight. And, you know, they wanted good things for, for her. And, and she was somebody's little girl. And you say that, you know what? I don't, I just, I can't abide it. So something in me really goes to, I mean, she doesn't need me. I'm not, I'm not a I'm not white knight. Now. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a, a knight going to save her. She's fine. But it just, uh, it's just not something that, um, that I, I, I will abide in my presence. I just won't allow it, you know? So 
Yeah, it's very strong. So empathy, I think, is a big thing. I mean, this is why I've never been a pickup artist. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that because I'm not saying that pickup artists don't have empathy, but uh, when they, when a lot of the instruction is to is to get this girl to do what you want her to do, um, unwill unwittingly, perhaps you know, I don't want a last minute resistance. I don't want to talk a girl into bed. I want her to be excited to be there. Uh, I, you know, I'm maybe I'm nervous, maybe she's nervous. That's okay, but she wants to be there and she's willingly dancing, do, dancing the dance. I don't want to have this convincing or give her a bunch of alcohol or, you know, you know that kind of stuff. So, yeah, right, I'm different that way. I have a ton of questions for you. Um, I'm not sure if you want to go any anywhere in the in the conversation. A lot of the time, no, the I'm good. I'll like flow. Free flow. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. People try and pre-send me questions. We'll send you the questions ahead of time. I don't even look at them. What am I going to do with them? <laughs> you know with you we'll wing it what are some of the things that you do i guess to let me see what are some of the things that you do i guess to like spark attraction if you were to distill it to like a science like maybe your energy i i've studied with hypnotica eric von Sido. Oh, okay. he has his program i think when it was your birthday he had comments on your profile happy birthday zan yeah and, uh, happy birthday by the way again although it was a couple I'm yeah i know him well yeah yes and yeah, that yeah. program that he recently started creating. Yeah, that uh, the deep the daily one he was creating, right? Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. Um, so what is the the question was? Uh, when like, how do you spark attraction when you go out? Like, what are some of your mindsets? Like, some of your attitudes? Like, uh, my my attitude, my spirit is is we're all broken and everybody's in their head, in, including including the women. You know, like they're all they're all in their head too they're all nervous about what what they're looking like with how they're sounding you know all this kind of stuff and so when you realize that you just kind of relax and say yeah maybe i'm nervous but everybody in the history of the, of the world was nervous to go talk to a girl and they went and did it anyway and that's why you're born because somebody got up the guts to go uh i don't know what to say go go talk to her okay and you know in, in 1822 and because of that you know your great grandfather was born your grandfather and now you so yeah, it's a, it's, you're never going to get over that, that butterfly feeling or that nervous feeling, but that's, that, that's good. It means you're doing something that's, that's, it has, is out of your comfort zone, something you, you know, on the edge of, of what you want to do, which is good. You should have that nervousness. It's great. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I have a ton of questions because these are actually really good. These are some of the ones that Eric uses when he's interviewed like other successful guys. So I'm just kind of like, I like to model people. I think one of the things that most people try to do is that if you have somebody that's put in the effort, like Zan's been, you get me, since a very early age in Canada, you get me going out there, writing his own book, being a published author, you get me, very well-written book. Um, the way that it, that it impacts, you get me, at an emotional level and how you can apply it in the real world. I mean, that's just wildly impressive. Most people won't even accomplish, you get me, a lot of these things throughout their whole lives. You get me having girls share his book. You get me promote it for him. Uh, like the other day on Instagram, you get me on his story. It was this girl. She was just promoting his book. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's, 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 these are some, these are, these are tremendous wins. You get me, especially in yeah, an area of cool. life where you get me most of the time, you won't be able to, I guess, find information that is distilled. You get me in a way where it's like, it's all authentic. It's all natural. You get me. It's like it's you're not really playing any. You're direct. Um, uh, cause, uh, mm -hmm. cause, I mean, because there's a bunch of different people in different areas even today that they'll teach it, but they, no one has it the way that Zan has it with that authenticity of a poetic adventurous. You get me like an astronaut, treasure hunter. You get me kind of like a pro. I like astronauts. I like adventure. <laughs> um, I like the treasure hunters. You get me uh, being a pirate. You get me. Um, where it's like that energy of fun where we're yeah. going to go explore the unknowns together and you can tag along and it would be a loss. You get me if, I, if you don't tag along. So I wanted you to tag along, but I'm still going to go this way. <laughs> you get, you're describing you it very well. <laughs> That's cool. Hey, appreciate you. I've learned from Zen. And yeah, that is good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What is one of the most important things uh, when it comes to creating attraction? Like what are the components that it would consist of? 
Well, I, you know, the, the sentence I'm known for, one of the sentences I'm known for is honesty is the greatest yeah. aphrodisiac, you know? I spent my life, my 20s, and part of my 30s trying to be a seducer, trying to be the guy who could be smooth and sure. suave. And, <laughs> and, 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 but what you realize, it's a, it's a lot of stuff you don't need. Because um, it's not a game of manipulation. It's just trying to say things in a certain way that, that has a vibration, that has a magnetic quality to it, which is good. Uh, but what I learned was the more you strip away and just plain speak, the more attraction can be allowed to blossom. If you just say, you know what, I'm gonna say this to you. I don't even know you, but I saw you, I was over there with my friend, Noel, and I saw you and I had to come say hi to you. I don't know why, but there's something about you. And I just wanna say that. Those kind of sentences that boom, 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 boom. Yes. They're, uh, they're powerful and they're, and they're truth. You know, she can't reject it and say, no, no, that's not true. <laughs> yes, it is true. It's true. I saw you and I wanted to talk to you. That is truth. That is the truth of the universe. No one, no scientist can say that it was not true. How do you respond and, though sometimes with women? Like, let's say for example, they, 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 ha they, they don't know you so well. So in building comfort um, right off the back, not in a sense of like the traditional PUA, yeah. but I just, 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 just like, like regularly, you got me. Well, I like, say it. You're different from all these guys. I, I think it's, it's just a different style. I, I would prefer it to a large extent because it's just completely different. Like this is the kind of stuff yeah. you can go out. You can have multiple girlfriends if you want. If you want to get married, well, you can have that too. Um, it's yeah, it's a, it's a, it's for me. It's like I just I don't leave anything to chance. So I I speak everything. I say it. Uh, if I don't want her to be uncomfortable with me, I tell her, I'm not, I, I promise you, I'm not going to make you uncomfortable. I promise you'll be comfortable. I'll make sure I will ensure. I say that I tell her how it's going to be so that there's no guessing in her mind. You know, if I say, listen, you know, we're going to have a party over here and it's, you know, it, it's in this apartment over here and we'd like you to come bring your girlfriends. And, and she says, well, uh, I don't really know you. Then immediately I, I, I tell her, I, I, I put her mind at ease. I say, listen, I know you don't know me. You just met me. It's my friend here and you. Uh, we're invi I'm inviting you to this and I promise you will not be uncomfortable. I promise you'll have a good time and I promise I'll get you home safe. You'll be completely safe and comfortable and I promise you will not be uncomfortable and, and, or you put in, a, in a, any, any kind of you know, bad situation. I promise. I'll take it upon myself. If you say that with that kind of authority, that that girl and her girlfriend and her other girlfriend will believe you so how do i do i build comfort i speak it i, I say, I'd say it, be comfortable around me because i'm i'm gonna be this how it's gonna be and i promise it's gonna be okay for you and when i say it they believe it they've been told all their lives you know oh trust me baby uh you know uh nothing's gonna happen just come to my apartment but when i say it is different it comes from 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 authority of uh of truth i guess you know of grounded a groundedness i guess yeah and they believe it because I said it. I don't leave it to chance. I don't. I don't. I don't show with my actions. You're going to be comfortable. I say. I promise. You look in my eyes. I will take it upon myself to make sure that you are completely enjoying the evening at our party. And if you want to leave, I promise I'll get you home. I'll buy the Uber. I'll drive you. Whatever. I'll. I'll take care of it. You'll be safe. Yeah. So that's very powerful because. Yeah, I, I started using that more, but I mean, it's just so different having you in person because it's one thing to see somebody online, you get me, and stream their content and they connect because of who they are because they're just authentic. Yeah. And yeah, it's, yeah. uh, and then having the book, you get me, and then going through it. <laughs> and then, like, I don't know, like, then having you here, um, I, I just think it's one of the coolest things in the world. You get me. Well, there um, you go. Cause, Happy yeah. Cause, <laughs> yeah. I, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, and I, sure. I appreciate you, by the way. I know that you couldn't make it the first time either. I was like, oh, I know. I, I apologize for that. I had a circumstance <laughs> that awesome. came up. I was scheduled before last week. But fine, thank you fine. for being patient and letting me change it. Yeah, perfect. So, see. Okay. So when you've been around other guys, and let's say that they have game as well, what are some things that you've seen that maybe they have in common with other guys, either they have in common with you, or something that you've seen from your expertise that you're just like, I've identified this as being something where it's like, okay, 
This is mm. something that they can use. And by the way, Zan is also releasing the audio version of the Alabaster Girl soon. That's true. Which it's I being, posted it's on being, the Facebook It's, it's group recorded as well. and it's being post production right now. So I don't I don't know the ETA, but it's coming. They'll tell you though. I mean, yeah. you're just the boss. They'll, they'll, they were <laughs> guys. I just need this done. Yeah, just for sure. I'll get it. Yeah, I'll get it done. Um, other guys, uh, I don't notice other guys. Um, or for yourself then. I know that being magnetic, being truthful, being honest, being direct. Um, uh, yeah, my whole thing is like, my whole thing is I'm not trying to sure. out, yeah. out gun the other guys. Guys can, you know, come try and break off your piece. If I'm talking to a girl and another guy tries to get in, in there and trying to be cool and stuff like that, I let him. All right. Have at it, you know, like, like, give, give it your best shot, you know, because for me, I'm not, I'm not loud and I'm not trying to be over the top or really trying to impress her in any way. I let her, my thing is all subterranean. My thing is all, you know, like uh, sub communicated. So I, I'm communicating with my eyes. The guy could be stopped talking to her and I'm still like this. I see her over there. She's, he's trying to get in there, trying to be, tell jokes and stuff like that. And I look at her and it's still on. This guy can do whatever he wants. Nothing's going to break it. So yeah. it's a sub communication. So, and, and you know, Casanova had that. He never tried to outgun the other guys or be more flashy or more cool or bigger Lamborghini or any of that stuff. He basically just would let the women know, I like you and I would like to see you. And then all the other guys pile on her, you know, and, and, and he, was, he kept his like, he'd keep connected with her like this. I see you. Let all the guys try and flirt with you and pick you up, do all that kind of stuff. I'm right here when you're ready to come talk to me. And it's effective. So if that attraction doesn't get broken, you know, it's a quantum entanglement of the photons, you know, from your eyes and, and it's real. So, uh, yeah. So it's the other guys there, they can do whatever they want. Go ahead try. I don't care. Does that, does that answer your question? It does. Yes. You're also going to get a lot of exposure, by the way, a lot of the guys that I know are very successful, like super like, uh -huh. like I'm yes so in case they want to do coaching or anything like that afterwards <laughs> you get me um well I don't I do a lot of coaching fine. anymore <laughs> just just really? so you know yeah I'm writing my second I was interested book. actually in coaching for, I was actually curious on that um, right now I'm close to making well, my first 15 to 25k I'm going to reinvest that I'm going to scale the business <laughs> well I'll tell you I'll what I do guys tell me who your friends are I'll tell you who you are the kind of coaching I, I don't do general coaching anymore i did it for many years but if somebody's yeah. got a really specific thing they want to solve like, like apprenticeship under you like a real strong you know i've got this situation or i've got this i'm 32 years old or whatever and and for the last 12 years i tried to understand this and i don't get it and i really want to know it so if it's really specific and it's really something we can target i'll come in like a gunslinger like a like a sniper and in a very intense period get to know the guy and and david wolf i yeah, I call it my Winston Wolf coaching, you know, in the, in the movie Pulp Fiction, the wolf comes yes. in, you know, we got a body to get rid of in, in the car. And we have 45 minutes before my wife gets home. He says, Okay, I'll have some coffee. And he says, Okay, you do this, you do this. And they say, Well, who, who do you think you are? He says, I'm the wolf, I'm going to solve your problem in 45 minutes. And so I come in like that. If, if someone's got a very specific problem with their wife, or a girl they just met, or a girl they started to date, and she's starting to flake, or any of these kind of very specific things. I can, you bring me in, I, I basically, I'm in your pocket. I tell you what to text, how to, you know, for uh, basically for a month. And it's, uh, it's high, very high cost because I want to write my book. <laughs> so you have to just lodge me. You have to get me interested. Um, but it's very effective and, and I'm not wrong. And I can solve a problem for a guy, you know, with a woman that he has uh, or very specific. So, yeah. So, I do that for very select customers, very select uh, guys who have a very specific problem that we can, and they're really, you know, excited and, and think, and they want this something solved. Then they hire me on retainer, like a lawyer and we go. So that's, uh, that's what I do these days. And, and I don't take everybody. You right. Know, guys want to just, guys just want to get on the Sometimes phone. Sometimes not even if you can me. make a big commission, you get me, you'll turn them down just because either yeah, you're not comfortable or whatever yeah. it may be altogether. Yeah, it doesn't, it, it has to be something that I'm going to be excited to work. For. Basically, it's 30 days. I work with the guy for 30 days and I'm very connected to him for 30 days as access to me and WhatsApp and you know, all that kind of stuff. We have calls and Zoom calls and that kind of stuff. And uh, we solve this problem in 30 days. We fix it for him. Um, 
And so that I like to do because then I get really committed and I get excited. Let's go. You got a problem? Okay. Let's walk this through. You tell me all the details. You tell me the whole history of it. Let's walk it through and we go. Boom. And we'll, we'll solve it. Yeah. That I like doing. So. That's awesome. I'm going <laughs> to consider maybe doing something like that. I know I'm curious on joining the RS Amorati when it uh, opens up again. Now, yeah, we, we are starting up in June. So anybody wants to join my, we have a men's group, which is called the Amorati. And it's a, a network of men we've had for 15 years. We've got members for 15 years. We have members all over the world. I do live group calls in, in our Facebook group. We have a, a live conference twice a year, which we haven't had for the last year. So we've do, been doing it on Zoom. And it's, uh, it's, it's $300 for the program. It starts three times a year. We're starting the next one in June. If anybody's interested, just go to amorati.net, A-M-O-R-A-T-I.net. And put your name on the waiting list because we're, we're going to, and a week before you get first access to the, to the course, to the 90 day course. So yeah, there you go. And then you graduate as an Amorati member for life. It's cool. And you can take it again, can't you? Isn't it like Yeah, that? anybody who's taken it can go through it again. Yeah, for sure. Wow. Yeah. We've got members from, you know, all over the world and for many years. And we, you know, we have our conferences last one we had was in Bucharest, but before COVID and we had 80, 80 guys from around the world, big party filled with women, you know, and, 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 and guest speakers from, you know, we bring in guest speakers and we have a great conference and it's free for members. Members can do it for free. We, like I said, we've been doing the last two on zoom and it looks like this one in May is going to be in zoom too. So May, September, every year we do it. So hopefully next September, we can do a live one again. We'll see. You had this story um, that um, uh, relating to that program, to your book and to a lot of your works, it was that you had this party one time, it was your birthday mm -hmm. and you had a bunch of women mm -hmm. and one of your girlfriends, she really liked you and they were all wearing like lingerie. I don't know if you want to share that story. And it's one that yeah, I like it was my party. 40th birthday party. And, and I had, I, by that time I had, by that time I had learned yeah. enough about the heart of women that I had, I had wow. had some good relationship with good girls. And I had this girlfriend at the time and she threw me my 40th birthday party. And I walked into my apartment at the end of the day and it was filled with women. She had invited all the ex-girlfriends and ex-lovers she could find of mine and there was eight or nine of them and it was a lingerie party and they were all in their lingerie and they brought their husbands and, and boyfriends and the guys were all wearing pajamas and cigars and you know and slippers and stuff like that and it was a really really um noble and wonderful thing you know to to be surrounded by a sense of abundance when right. you have this kind of spirit there's no such you can you can date a woman for a year three months uh, a week uh, five years, but sometimes paths go like this, you know, they just, they separate circumstances or life changes or life goals change. And, and it happens, you know, relationships, you know, break up. But the difference between me and other men is I'm never called the ex. Oh, that's my ex. No. Uh, really? Yeah. So like, there's a great sense of abundance and all my ex girlfriends uh, who are married off and stuff. If I go into the city, I go for lunch with them. They bring their husband. There's no sense of jealousy because I'm respectful to men, you know? And, uh, and I have this real sense of um, living abundance with the, the, the women that I've had in my past. There's no, there's no vile thoughts or he was an ass or any of that kind of conversation, you know? Nothing like that. So, yeah. That's a good different. goal to have. Yeah. You're honest with women. That's right. And you're okay. You get me being honest with them. I think yeah, that's yeah. something that not everybody does. And I mean, in business, you get smoked out, dude. Like, guys, all right, I'm not going to say names specifically, of course. But they'll be around some, you know, top players. Like, I've been mean, guys that they've made movies about. Um, hmm. And then, I'm serious. serious. And it's like, they'll, not, I'm not talking about, you got me anything PUA. I'm talking about, like, business, business. Like, I'm yeah, talking I understand. About yeah, yeah. Okay, just in case. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know the real deal, yeah. They get smoked out, you get me, no matter where they're at, because they lose their sense of like integrity at some level, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. with themselves, maybe with other people, how they conduct business. And mm -hmm. in life, it's typically like when you have a good rule of thumb, you can apply it to more than one area of life. You get mm -hmm. me integrity, you can apply it in many areas of life.
Of course. Um, <laughs> like every, everything that I write about in my book is it, it applies to life in general. It has, Beautiful. It's 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 strong with relationships and the polarity of men and women, but it's really not about women. It's about life, living a real life of abundance. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So what are the qualities that women have said to you that they're attracted to him? I'm sure I, I, I probably know mm -hmm. a couple, but for the guys that are yet to buy the book now, because I mean, if they don't buy it, you get me this, this guys, by the way, um, this book here, it's a tremendous book. Do yourself a favor. You get me. If you're watching this, you're big on self-investing. You're somebody that's either in the process of putting a lot of money into yourself, or you're already dumping a ton of money into yourself. Um, I need yeah. you guys to check out that book because that book is going to be something that if at any point you wanted to have a natural way of being able to interact with women while being yourself. You get me um, uh, here. I'll, I'll, we'll bring two bottles of champagne. Uh, <laughs> one to drink and one to pour all over your body. <laughs> there you nice. go. <laughs> yeah, I'm the qualities that women are attracted to are um, I mean, you're going to find girls who are who are attracted to, you know, the car you drive and this kind of stuff, you know, this. Yeah. But, you know, depends what you want in life. There's a there's an entire volume of women out there who don't have that, who don't really oh, care yeah. about those things at all. They want to know that they're having a good experience with a good with a great guy, you know. So attractive qualities that I think that women look for in men is that they are dedicated to their life learning. They have abundant curiosity. They're they want everyone around them to have a, a good experience, including the waiter and everything. You know, they want everybody to they want to lift everybody in their presence. And women want to be around the, that kind of uh, uh, a presence like that, you know. So I think uh, those things and just being real, being honest, we're all, you know, we're all vulnerable. We're all trying to, you know, wearing masks and trying to hide it. And they just say it. They just plain speak. You know what? I like you. That's all I know. You can do what you want with that information, but I'm saying it, you know. That's a very positive, powerful thing. Yeah, and yeah, I don't think course. most people share their intentions and are like that throughout the process. One of the things where it's like, what are what's one of the things that you do, for example, where it's like you're always honest and sincere. You don't get last minute resistance. But what are some of the things, I guess, that you do where it's like when you're kind of like, I guess, like, I don't know, like in in speeding up the process, you get me just using that word in general, in speeding up the process, you get me in the interaction between a woman that is drawn to you, you get me, maybe because it's your sense of adventure, your sense of, mm -hmm. you get me just being yourself, you get me without having or anything that you're doing, but in being able to just lead it, you get me back in like in the days of Casanova, where it's like, you'd be able to spark attraction naturally. And you had this other quote where it's like, give me 10 minutes and I will, get, and, I'll t and I'll talk any woman's <laughs> ear off and I could even bet the queen of France. Who was that one, by the way? Voltaire said that. There. I've give only me, read me, your works. You're the creator of it. <laughs> give me five minutes to explain away my ugly face and I can bed the queen of France. Yeah. And I understand that because women really are, are you know, really fall in love with the words and, and the flow because the, the words are uh, what, you know, kind of have a rhythm to them and a, and a vibration. And it doesn't matter what is being said. I promise you that it doesn't matter the, what the content of the words at all. It's the, it's the spirit of how he's, presenting himself so that's why you'll see people be listening to this and they they have a friend who's not good looking and not tall and not maybe got a, a pot belly you know he's not in shape he doesn't have a cool car he has no money and he always gets girls and what is it there's about something about him that has this freewheeling vibration of curiosity and abundance he just and he likes girls like guys like that they like girls you know they just like them. There's like, there's something about them I like, and I like to be around them and women can feel that, you know? How do you, how do you do it in a way where it's like women naturally just get comfortable with you because of your sense of like, the men, I know you do something with your energy that is magnetic. That is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't, can you, can you talk about that? I'm sure most guys wouldn't mm -hmm. even be able to catch on to like the subtlest things. I I've think that I've naturally I'm, been good with girls. Then I had a bad relationship. I broke up. I pretty much went AFC and I had to mm -hmm. pretty much pick myself up and find myself as a person all over again. Um, I had gone through depression a little bit. 
I really liked her. You get me? Things didn't work out. I hope she's doing fantastic. I'm doing much better now. And <laughs> good. <laughs> you know, what are some of the things you get me that for like for yourself? It's like that magnetic like pulse with, that you have with people. That that sense of like charm and charisma. Like I don't know if you could like. I know it's very subtle. well. I tell you, the the men that that have had this in history and the men I've seen and there's very few. Yeah, of course. They are completely gracious and they have an abundant sense of generosity. And I don't mean yeah. buying for the buying the you know picking up the bill for the table. I don't mean you know necessarily being generous with money, but being generous with their spirit. So if you ever meet, I I know I know a man who's who's been with. A great deal of women. He's the, more than any man I've ever met. Is it and when he, no, 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 no. He's not a know. pickup artist guy. Okay. I won't say his name, but he's a good friend of mine, and he has been with more women than everybody listening <laughs> together. <laughs> and he has. A, when you meet him, you're the only person in the world. Like, doesn't matter about the person standing beside you or. It, when, they, when he shakes your hand, he says, you know, nice to meet you. And he really, really looks into you and wants to know. Really curious about you. And he does that with women. He's, he's, he's very gracious with his spirit, which is the opposite of being judgmental. And yeah. My Siri is kicking in. Every time I say you see, Siri kicks in. Hey, Siri. <laughs> On my iPad. <laughs> yeah. Plays and new so, book. It's coming out uh, soon. It's going to be great. Yeah. So, so the idea is that he's generous with his spirit. Are you reading it by any chance? What? Like you, 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 are you going to be reading the book, or are you going to be getting somebody to? Oh, I already read it? it. It's recorded. You, you. So you're the one that's going to be like it's your done. voice. It's done. Right. It's being, it's being processed now. But you're, but you, you're, are you going to be the narrator though? Like. Yeah, yeah, I did it. My voice, yeah. That's you. Not easy to do. It's like 25 hours of recording. <laughs> it's going to be a great book. That's like Ray Dalio. He's like a multi-billionaire. You got me. Dan's like a multi-billionaire when it comes to women. Like he might not even have to go to Dan. <laughs> it's, well, it's a, go. Right. Exactly. I mean, it doesn't matter. Like you'd be surprised. You get me like, I've, I've had buddies of mine the other day that I, I took a buddy of mine out and we met two dancers, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't pay them anything. Okay. But I was just running game. Right. And the way I run game is I use a lot of mm -hmm. different things. But I like to use myself. You get me. I, I take the best practices of all of it, and I just I'm authentic. I don't. I'm just myself. I'm just like I'm just straight up, and I just naturally create those processes that are already taking place, right? Maybe I'll speed it up somehow. Yeah. yeah. But one of the things that I did is that I gave the dancers to my friend. My friend's dad uh, yeah, is very successful. Go. They're like, very yeah. He's the one that I'm going to be using for real estate now. Um, when I'm closing, when I'm beginning to get these deals. Okay. The good. Yeah. I've, I didn't grow up wealthy. Uh, myself um but i'm in the process you're heading of like, get creating you get me success and more wealth and things like that now uh, yeah, that's very you, accomplished nothing wrong with that I'm, I'm very much a capitalist i believe in it so yeah yes cool <laughs> our neighbor is from canada there you go Hello, eh? exactly <laughs> I have, I have friends in canada okay. yeah. business related I, I'm, I, I i come from a different world okay? it's just but it's still, it's still a zan and there's other guys that I could have had on, but I don't think I'm going to have them on, to be honest with you. Oh, really? I like, okay. the way that, well. I like the way that you do it, to be honest with you, much better. I don't want to set in stone, but I don't think I will. Does that make sense? Because like, Yeah, but it may be some other perspectives that are, that are you, you gain something so? from everybody, you know? You could, yeah. I mean, but the, you do it so authentically, though. Like, there are some guys that, like, maybe sometimes you get me, and, like, it's, like, associating, like, your reputation and your brand. You get me. Like, I, it's, like, I always like to do it, at least for me, you get me with highest standard possible and there's a bunch of different people and all kinds of things uh, and i'm just being myself i've never thought about that you know like i've, I've spoken have, on stages like a very high integrity and if they have that that's great you get me yeah. they can they can message me offline you get me and maybe they'll possibly get featured on the show which is awesome I've, right it's a great show and i've it's, it's um, a lot of traction i've been on cool. different stages where people said well why are you supporting that those people and i'm not I, i'm standing in front of a bunch of men that might get a good message i don't care you know, if it's a, if, if it's I'm one of your students, I'm 22. Yeah. So, so, so I don't care, you know, I'll stand in front of a group because maybe there's one person in the audience that, that says, you know what, I don't want to live this ideology that I've been, been learning with this group. And I want to, I want to understand what he's trying to say. So I'll stand in front of any group. I don't care. And if people want to associate me with that, I don't care either. Hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm 
I don't think about these things. I just, if there's an audience, I want to go, you know, because maybe somebody will listen to it and, and I'm not swayed by anything. I'm not influenced by it. I can go talk to a feminist group, which I've done many times. And there's only women <laughs> in the audience. They probably loved you. And they're all, yes, they're antagonistic they probably at to sleep first. With you afterwards. No, they were. Uh, by the end of it, they're 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 on my side. Put it that way, <laughs> for sure. Going that yeah. that's good. What are some things that you do to maintain your confidence, like so high, like maybe things that you tell yourself, or experiences that you created for yourself? You get me, or like other guys, because you have a very healthy confidence. Uh, healthy. I think it just comes from the slow realization in me that took me a long time to understand because I was very insecure and very um, felt, felt that I was unlovable and, and I would always be lonely and, and no one would want me and I, and I don't know what to say and I don't say the right things and I'm not in shape and whatever. And what changed in me is I realized that, that everybody, including all the girls you meet, including all the hot Instagram models, are thinking the exact same thing. They suck, they would change their nose, they would change their hips, they would change their spirit. They, they don't like their laugh. Everybody's thinking the same thing as you are. Everybody, when you realize that you just relax, we're all, we're all kind of like in our heads, we're all broken. We're all thinking that we said it was just, we just said it was a stupid thing to say, including all those girls. So that makes you relax, say, well, why am I so stressed? You know, everybody's in the same boat. And that slow realization gives, makes you relax, which translates into confidence because it's, it's, it's like you don't care what people are thinking about you anymore. And in my early 20s, when I was your age, I cared a lot what people thought about me, a great deal. Yeah. That's all I thought about. What are they thinking about me? And I felt stupid all the time and I felt, you know, awkward and everything. So now I don't care. <laughs> and it comes from just a, a lifetime of recognizing that everybody's thinking the same thing. So, yeah. That's a great answer. Okay, mm -hmm. let's see. Let's see. Some of these questions are from Eric, by the way. Like, I, Eric had, like, a, a list of, like, interview questions that he'd asked, like, other guys. Oh, okay. So I have some of these, and some of them have been my own. So I'm mixing it. Like, I like Eric no a lot. No problem. Because, and I, t I tell him all the time. I Hopefully, if I get anybody else on, it'd be just most likely just you and him. Um, Did you have him on yet? I have not, not yet, no. Okay, yeah. Not yeah. yet. I've been building the relationship with them because I'm authentic. I'm just myself. I'm just like, listen, dude, like I have boogers <laughs> too. Cool, right? Yeah, I know. There you I go. I showered, though. So I'm very clean. <laughs> um, I, yeah, it's just being yourself. I think one of the, I go to this millionaire um, uh, that I go to. I'm, I'm, I have a class with him earlier, later today. His name's Brad Lee. You may or may not have heard of him. He has a I podcast don't think so. called Dropping Bombs. Um, he's one of the titans in business. He's around guys that are pulling in hundreds of millions, um, around Forbes 50, 50s, wealthiest under 50. Right, right. You get me like, like giants. You get me. Zan's a giant when it comes to like dating. Um, <laughs> and guys could learn a lot from him. You get me. So I know I do. I'm one of his students, just in case. And one yeah. of the things that he'll share with us is just be authentic with people. Just go out there and build real relationships. Yeah, yeah, of course. Right? Like just be yourself because at the end yeah. of the day, he's had experiences and he'll tell us stories where it's like, you never even know if that person might even give you blood in the future. I'm not saying, but just, <laughs> you never know what real friendships building yeah. real friendships. And what, Zan's work is something that I'm really drawn to. You get me because it's just authentic. It's like they, they, they're congruent with each other. See? Yeah, that's great. Okay. What should a man be focusing on when pursuing a woman? I set time aside just for you, by the way. So, like, if this goes on, like, we we have time here, um, you know, just 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 in case. I've got about another thirty well. minutes. About another thirty minutes, okay. then I've got to go. No, um, that's fine. But it's a question. You, by the way, is, even passing by, like, it's yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I'm happy to happy to on. talk to you, talk to you, you and your friends, no problem. Um, what was the question again? How how should a man? What should a man be focusing on when pursuing a woman? What should oh, focus on? that she's got a good spirit, that she's got a sweet, sweet spirit. You know, what you don't want is a, is a woman. And there's a lot of them because, you know, the, women need to do their own work, too. They need they need their own coaching, for instance. Um, you look for somebody who's got a, a, a who's who's not judgmental. Who's who if you went up and said, listen, can I you know, can I buy you a drink? 
she would say, you know, this is very sweet, but no, I can't, you know, I have a boyfriend or whatever, but she would be kind about it. Not, not that, yes. that mean rejections face and spirit, you know, you don't want that. You don't want a girl like that. No, it's not good. Um, or who, you know, wave you off. Like, you, you know, like you're some fly on her shoulder, you know? Yeah. You don't want the girls like that. And guys say, well, how do I get past that? Well, why do you want to get past that? Why do you want that girl? I don't want her. You know, the girls I'm with, the girls in my life would never be mean to a waiter, for instance, or, you know, or, 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 or bark at him or, um, or be mean to somebody who was being sincere and coming up and, you know, wasn't being an ass, but was just trying to, you know, talk to them and be nice. They would never be mean ever, ever, ever. And I don't want a woman like that would be mean like that. It's not my, I'm not going to educate her. It's for her, you know, like, so, so. So you, you'll see that, you know, the women that are in my house all the time, and my house is always filled with women, have a real sense of just joy and curiosity and abundance. And they are kind to people. They're, 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 good, they're good people. They're kind, you know, and that's important. So I wouldn't be around anybody that isn't, you know? Yeah. I think that's important. And then for when it comes to like, let's say, yeah, that, that answer, yeah. Because I mean, What's your perspective on not going for some of those women? Like maybe even for like a same night lay, let's say. Do you mean the ones that are, uh, you know, kind of being uh, yeah, like, mean and stuff? I, like? I, I, I've, I, you're, the first, you're the second person that introduced me to that concept. And I'm 22, yeah. so there's a couple of things in my reality where I'm still putting things together. You guys, yeah, like, yeah. At, at, least, at least me. And me, for me, it's too much trouble. I'm not going to try. Because like I said, if, if, if I want a girl for one night stand... I want her to be excited to be there and I want her to be there willingly and be, be caught up in the moment. Like I, I'm going to be caught up in the moment. I like the girl. Otherwise I wouldn't be inviting her. I like it and too. Someone, Thank you. Don't get any ideas. <laughs> yeah. And somebody that comes, comes along and, and judges your apartment or is this your car or just what, 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 what am I going to do with you? You know, I just don't want, I, yeah. it's, uh, going I'm to not going to, with that. It's like, it's like riding a, a bicycle with the brakes on your energy is blocked and there's no joy in it. And maybe you got her drunk and maybe she comes and maybe she lays on her bed and, on your bed and spreads your legs. But what's, but then what, you know, what's the point? You might as well have a magazine with a, you know, fold out magazine. It's the same thing. You might as well watch, you know, porn on, 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 on the computer rather than this girl laying there, you know, okay, get it over with, with her legs spread. No, I'm not interested. You want it. You want a good experience. And I don't mean you have to have this lover energy and, and make love to her and have this deep embrace. No, you can have a lot of fun, uh, but it has to be willingly and joyful on both sides and exciting and secret and, you know, sneaking. You want her to sneak into the room with you and like, you know, that kind of spirit. Well, exactly. That's what you want. How do you develop that, that charisma and spirit more Zen? Cause like I have my own insecurities that like, I'm always trying to overcome. You get me. Yeah, and that's get one you. of the reasons like I'm always, you get me learning from some of you guys. Cause I want to get better. You get me in every area of like my well, life. Well, you're 22. Yeah. I mean, I have a lot of stuff to figure yeah. out. Man. Yeah, you will. If you, if you have this kind of, you, you just at the beginning of this call, you described everything, you know, in a, in, in, in three minutes, you described, you described the bulk of my teachings. So if you just concentrate on that and, and read the book and, and just sit in the energy of that and, and try and recall that by the time you're 25, you're going to have way more of a sense and, and real understanding and real great sense of, of commun sub communication. So don't hurry it. You know, the, the, the German poet Goethe said, do not hurry, do not rest. And, and, and it's true, you know, so um, just, relax into it re recognize that you're on it you're a seeker you're on a mission you're sincere you want to know yes and really trust true. it and trust it you don't have to you know you know try and gang rush it through your system in, in a weekend it's it these things take contemplation you know you have to contemplate these things and why and hmm you have to ponder and look out the window and so uh and and then you you will be by the time you're 25 you'll be miles ahead of other 25 years miles ahead of them if you get even a little bit, even 10% of what we're talking about here from the beginning of this call into your system, uh, even 5% of that, you'll be, you'll be way better than most guys. It's the way it works. I appreciate that a lot, by the way. Um, yeah, I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. Steve. 
Okay. What is some of these questions have just been myself, by the way, when I've just been like interacting them. But some of these that's okay. Yeah. 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 I, I like your questions. They're good. And and make sure you get myself. the questions that you really want to understand, you know, for yourself. So yeah. Because if you have questions, then then listeners will have questions too. Some of them have been mine. That's, uh, that, that is, um, let me see if I have another one. Um, when it comes to, you got me. And by the way, Zan's uh, audio book is going to be coming out shortly soon. It's not announced yet, so you guys should just buy a copy of the paperback book. And I've been harping on it, but it's because I care about you guys. I give, Listen, I give, out, I give out free books if you go to alabastergirl, alabastergirl.com. Uh, you pay for the shipping and handling, and I'll sign one physically and send it to you in Miami, wherever you are. So just like yours. So go to alabastergirl.com and I'll, get, and, I'll, and I'll give you a free book. You just have to pay for the shipping and handling. So if you guys go on Amazon, if this book is like 20 bucks. I really <laughs> like Zan's stuff. You got me. I'm okay promoting stuff that I like. Because if I there can, if I, if I, I've had a, I had a six figure job when I was 19. I left that job because I don't uh, believe in the product. I don't believe in the product. So I left. Yeah. Good, I had good other companies that gave me opportunities like that, but I left. Yeah, leaving okay. the product it's it's been working out for me pretty good actually because right now it doesn't matter okay. you're on the path right you're on the path you're yeah, on, on the chosen road good for you the straight I and mean, narrow it's in front of me pretty much um it's uh, the straight and yeah, narrow me, yeah my life like at this point uh, but i mean it was like i mean i slept on air mattresses before i ate like ramen noodles uh, it's <laughs> like it's like it's like it's like over ten thousand. i mean it was we, we have our stories like Zan, for example, growing, grow, grow, getting on become, before becoming wildly successful. He had his process. You get me for the past 10, 20, 30 years of, you get me interacting with women. At first you get me, he would like, inter, he would be, <laughs> what makes these women tick? What makes them tick? Yeah. I and wanted to know. He, <laughs> I wanted to know. He yeah. would, and little by little, you get me, they began to open the worlds. You get me of like girls talking with only girls. I mean, I grew up naturally pretty good. I'm just going to be straight up. But I lost my game, and then this uh -huh. is Zan's process. I did, I did. I had to like get it back. Yeah. This yeah. is Zan's process. You get me. He ha he went through his process. You get me. <laughs> uh, you get me temporary defeat. You get me. But he learned throughout all of it, to the point where you get me. He was able to pretty much pave this road. You get me. As a pioneer, as there an adventurer, go. as a treasure hunter, as a go, pirate. Yeah. You get me. Um, yeah. Exactly. And. The way Zan wanted it to be painted, you got me, because he painted it, and it's inspiring to me. I'm sure. I, I'm sure it's inspiring to maybe a couple of other guys too, a couple thousand, right? And then <laughs> I'm gonna Great. promote this podcast. I'm gonna. One of the things that I'm gonna do in the near future is that uh, I'm gonna be, for example, putting a lot of marketing into the channel, uh, okay. for itself to getting it all out. So yeah. I'm I'm always very loyal to people who are loyal with me. I had one of my buddies, Pat Hilton. Um, well, I hope this is successful for you. You know, I hope it's a good enterprise for you and goes well. I wish oh you yeah, this is very... this is for fun. I do these for fun. I like. Yeah, them. yeah, yeah, yeah. Other people learn from them. They meet the guests. You get me. Of course. Um, um, they go to their website, and I like meeting. These are people that I get to meet some of my heroes and some of my role models. Does that make sense? Oh, there you go. And other people get to learn from them, and they don't even know these people exist sometimes. So that's so, true. You get me that I have wanting success social <laughs> dynamics life by design. I've, I've had guys that they've raised billions of dollars, multiple millionaires. Like, I, and right now we have like Zan, who's very accomplished. There you go. So it's, yeah, it's like some people are like, oh, I'm going to do it just for money. I'm like, no, I, 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 <laughs> I, I like, I actually, I actually like what I do. Um, I enjoy it. Um, and yeah, that's, that's awesome too. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. If you were a robot, right? Like, <laughs> what what are <laughs> what are three words that would come to you when women when when you see a woman you're interested in pursuing? Oh, uh, you want to bang? Oh shit! Badass. <laughs> That's what I would say if I was a robot. I would say, "Hey, what are you doing?" <laughs> I like that. What are some That's positive things say. that you tell yourself? Like, like what are positive affirmations that you share with yourself? Yeah, I mean, so, I, it's a combination of this, but I'm also being myself. And then I'm also using my own questions too. Like, yeah, you're, I don't, you're, not gonna, I, you're not gonna know which ones they are. Uh, that's true, I don't. I don't have the sense of affirmations or self-talk that I do. I, but I do a lot of thinking and a lot of contemplation. And I read a lot of literature. I don't read, I've never read a self-help book in my life. Never. Oh, wow. This is a self-help book, Doc. 
Well, well it isn't. It's, it's, a, a, it's more, it's a literature book, you know? And so, so oh, what I read was stories. Oh, stories is what helped me, you know? Stories was my self-help. And, and, uh, and literature, I think, you know, and stories of, of people who went to sea and, and the pirates and they did this and Casanova, you know, went to Warsaw and London. And I wanted to be like that guy. So my self-help was, was basically stories because nobody in the history of the world until our generation had uh, therapy for their childhood. Nobody right. in, the, in the history yep. of the world had that and everybody had a bad childhood in all of history and every culture. And, and instead of like thinking, well, I'm a victim and I need to go to years of therapy before I can be productive, right? They would go, they would go build something. They would go to see, they would go, in, you know, start a company. They would go, uh, you know, uh, migrate to a new land and, 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 and build a new land. And they didn't have good childhoods. They just said, well, that didn't work out. I'm, I'm, but my childhood's behind me now, see ya. And I'm gonna go do this stuff. We have to sit on our childhood and go through years of counseling and therapy to, to try and figure out what happened with mother and father. And we were abused by the, you know, by the neighbor, uh, but everybody in history was. And I'm not saying that those things are, you just laugh them off. You shake hands with the past, but everybody in history had that and they still built the world. So, and we're waiting for it, you know, for, for our past to change. <laughs> it's not gonna change. So that's 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 why pretty much with the past letting it go because you're bigger than that because well you because and the impact, no and, because and, you realize everybody had the same thing back. everybody had the same thing nobody had a, a great childhood in all of history so but they but they didn't make the excuses we make we make excuses and we get medication we're on, oh, on yeah, all, all stay away from that stuff. So we're on on medication because our, we think our because our childhood is oppressive to us, and like every, you know, we've always had this. And the difference is now we look inward and we think we we need a lot of help, you know, i.e., self help. When nobody had self help in history, it's a brand new industry, brand new. Nobody in all of culture and all of history had self help. Words didn't even exist together. It is relatively new. Before that, it was just like I think religion, and then self-help started within the last like I think like one or three hundred years. I mean, it didn't really exist. Yeah, maybe a hundred years. Yeah, hundred and twenty years. Yeah, it's relatively new. Yeah, eighteen nineties or something. Yeah, it's pretty new. <laughs> okay, it is. It is. A lot of things are new. Like we, we the the internet is new. Like we, it's a it's a different era of like time. Par is before before you got me even like hundred yeah. years ago. They I mean we rode horses. It's like <laughs> it's it's just it, it it is it's new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See. Then what are some of the things that you do? You got me. That I guess. I'm, 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 I, you're not gonna know which ones are which. Okay, so that's. I, I'm I think, good. I'm good. I like it. I've I'm got sorry. time for maybe two more questions, and then I can. I'll have to run here, Noel. Awesome. Go ahead. Okay, let me see if I have any here because <laughs> I have a couple of mine, but these are really, really, really structured. Yeah, but the ones it doesn't matter about the structure. You if the ones that are for, from you and you really want to know something, let's this let's, let's, let's do that. It's more fun. What is it what was it like having you get me multiple girlfriends? Because I know you had that in the book and you're like, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> uh yeah, yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> There's a, there's a saying that a, a good friend of mine has, which is true. And seeing said, multiple you know, women at the same time. Yeah, like, he, said I, that, he said this sentence. He said, one woman is trouble. Two women is double trouble. Three women or more is harmony. <laughs> so uh, I lived with two girls at one time in my life. Um, open relationship -y type thing, right? Two girls that lived with me for six months. And it was terrible. How did you even get them to agree to that is my question. I don't know. Right. One moved in and they, and her friend moved in. She needed a place to stay. So she moved in too. And, and they would be, you know, showering together, in the bed together, just being around together. And, but it was really a, an emotional roller coaster uh, because, you know, one would feel not getting attention and the other one, and it was just, a, it became a real, it didn't take long for it to become a real emotional unpleasant situation so i finally told one of the girls i said you got to leave it's not good and uh yeah and 
So I, yeah, it's not it's not good to have two women in your house at the same time that you're in a relationship with. No, or three or more. Girlfriends. There's a reason that yeah. the reason that harems work because three or more, uh, they take care of themselves. This is not politically correct, but it's true. Here's, you have three or three or four girlfriends. Yeah. <laughs> if you have three or four girlfriends or three, <laughs> if you have four girls living with you and they're you're the boyfriend to all of them, you have no trouble. There's no drama in that house because they sort it out without you. If it's two, it's nothing but drama. One, you got a little bit of drama. Two, it's major drama. Three or more, they leave you alone and they sort out their, their disputes and their indifferences or their differences without involving you and your, your life is sublime. That's why harems work. You know, that's why in the Old Testament, in the Bible, they, they had multiple wives and concubines because they took care of the kids, they took care of the, the household, you know, and you're busy being King David, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. And I mean, how was that like, more or less? Like, because you have, I, I, not, not for that specific thing, but like, when you go out, you get me, what are some of the things that like, you've done that, for example, have made women want to see you again? I know, like, your sense of fun, or your adventure, you get me, but like, mm. what are what are some things that women are just like, I'm never going to forget about that guy. Like, well, that you guy, just... he made my life better because of just simply who that person was. Well, in a bar, you do you have, a, do you have a chance to do that in a bar? You know, you think about it. I don't it, like, like bars too much. Like, yeah, I just, it's like, like I, I just a bar is a loud, casually. loud I'll go music. Go shopping, I'll talk to yeah. a girl. It's <laughs> a, if you can spend time with her at all, that's what I'm talking about. If you spend time with her, she's going to think, she's going to think, I met this great guy. Great. He's way different than any other man I've met. And I really enjoy being around his spirit, his energy. And he's, he's delighted to see me. And he's not, a, he's not needy. He's not a wuss. Um, and so it, it's, if they spend time in your presence at, at all, and any time they go on a date with you, for instance, they're going to want to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and be around you. So it's, it's just the way you are being and the way you present yourself and the way you look at her and the way you, uh, you, you really see her. You, you, know, you, you, you really have a good introspective look at this girl and wonder who she is as a person. And be happy that she came to see you and all these kind of things. And if you have that spirit, but you, without the neediness element, which say, Oh, I like this girl so much. And, uh, you know, and I'll buy you flowers every day. You know, you don't need that needy spirit, but you just really have a sense of real desire to be with this girl. They won't forget it. And you give them lots of space. In other words, you have no pressure. I don't try and convince a woman of anything. If I say, listen, we have a party over here and, and we want you to come bring your girlfriend. No, thank you. I can't because I have, then I'll, then I'll say, listen, okay. Are you sure? Because you'll be safe. I'll make sure you get home timely manner. I'm, you know, no, I can't do it. Okay. Where most pickup artists, whatever, will keep going. No, but yeah, I could just, da, 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 and maybe you could just, blah, 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 and I promise, you know, and, and, and they, and they, and they persist. You got to give grace. You have to let I them go it freely weird after a while. Like, right. Of course, like too much. Never be invasive with oh. your spirit or your, like or your space. Topic. Nothing. Never be invasive. Yeah. So there you go. That's a good lesson. It's all in the book. So you'll, you, you know, you guys who get the book, come get the free book, alabastagirl.com. Let me know what you think of it. Put a review on Amazon. I think you did, right? I may have. I, I believe I did. I may. I have. saw your name on there. I think. Yeah. I, I, I may have. Remember. I think I did. I. I believe I did. Like I, I believe I did. I may have. I most likely. I think I'm like ninety percent. It's like I'm being real. I'm just. I'm... Yeah, I think I saw you, but maybe, maybe, maybe somewhere else. But anyway, <laughs> but good. Thank you if you did. And uh, um, even if you give a bad review, at least it gets what? No, it was a great action book. out there. Yeah. Tremendous. <laughs> so I get time for one more question, Noel, and then I'm gonna have to run. Um, Dan. I'm grateful you even passed by today. But yeah, you bet. To you bet. Happy to be here for you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. What are some things you get me when you go out, you get me, um, you think make you charismatic? Because you have, you get me like, like I know right now we're just being ourselves and I, I like you, by the way, like you're somebody that I do look up to and they should definitely check out the book because most <laughs> guys in life will never, ever, ever experience the kind of success that Zan has. Mm. Unless, the, you get me, they are already naturally like that, you get me, or somehow will learn that it is possible to get good in this area of life. Mm -hmm. You don't have to stay where you're at if you want to get better. 
right? Like I've had all kinds of friends growing up. Some of them were worried about women. You get me go, digging into their pockets. Um, uh, that's one of my worries now as I'm creating, beginning to create wealth. Like I just, uh, <laughs> I, I used to be a pretty bad kid. I was a problematic kid when I was younger. Got out of gangs, all that stuff. I could have, I could have ended up somewhere pretty bad. Um, and hmm. fortunately, well, good for you, you man. Me, good for you. I was able oh. to do a 180 in my life. <laughs> yeah, good for my you. Self image, reading yeah. a lot of books. What are some things you got me that you you believe that make you charismatic when you're like in environments? You get me becoming the life of the party. Uh, well, I tell you exactly. I tell you exactly what it is. Uh, if you come, to, if for, anybody comes to my else, house, just, just yeah. Sad. If someone's at my house and like there's a house party or something, and people are sitting on the couch, people are sitting on chairs. What you'll never and see. Own giant. Yeah, what you'll never see where where I'm around is. Uh, somebody pulling out their phone and looking down at it because nobody's talking to them. I want to, you know, I don't want to buy that. My, my, my sense of this, someone who's being, cause I was, I was left to, when I was a kid, I was, I was, I was picked last on the team and I was, I was lonely and no kids would play with me sort of thing. Right. We would have been friends. So, then. Yeah. Oh, you feel cool. There you go. Yeah, so if you what? see, you, yeah. if I'm in a house party and there's, and there's people sitting around and I see Noel over there and no one's talking to you and everybody's all talking and laughing stuff, and, and you're just sitting there quietly. I instantly, I don't care who who's talking, who's telling a joke. I stop in the middle. Hey, wait, Hey, wait, 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 everybody. No, come here. Did you meet this girl? Come over here. And I pull you into the energy. The energy is always going to be in the center of the room. I make sure nobody is left out in any environment. I'm in. if I'm in a bar and with five guys, and one guy standing over there, we're talking to this girl and he's not included. I grab him physically. I grab his, his, his by the collar, say, come here. You got to meet this girl too. get in here. This is Susie. And we just met her, you know? So I make sure that nobody feels unincluded because I was unincluded. And I know what it feels like. And I will not, not allow that. So to, to be the life of the party, you're all, I'm always checking in. I could be talking to girls or whatever, but I'm always checking in out of the back of my eye back of my, my head at my eyes I, I can see I know what's going on and or if I see a couple that's you know that you know that's sitting all close sitting talking to each other and ignoring the rest of the group I break it I say hey you guys get into here we're talking over here come on I, I, I bring the energy back into the center like a conductor and that's way everybody's included everybody feels like they're seen everybody gets to join in on the conversation even if they're nervous they're not nervous around me because I got my arm around the guy you come with me let's go talk to girls so that's a strong spirit and i and because i know what it feels like to be to be sitting quietly everybody's cool everybody's talking the girls are all smiling flashing their teeth the guys are cool and you're standing there completely in your head uh it's nervous no one's talking to you you try and say something and they look at you funny and you just stand there awkward i won't allow it if i see that anybody i, I grab that guy or that girl say hey you come talk you come talk you come stand with me let's go let's go talk to people go, let's go I make sure they're not unincluded. I can't, that's not, that really affects me. So I can't do that. You have a good soul, Zan, and a good heart. Oh, thank you. That's very yes. kind. Yeah. yeah, that's kind. Being real, my pleasure. But just being real, like, it's like, <laughs> oh, like. Well, no, I, I do have to go. It. So hopefully this is helpful for you and your, and your, your band of brothers. The women and men. And the women, and all the women you're gonna have in your future. <laughs> so this is one of my teachers, Zan Perion. Um, I'm very proud to share that he's one of my teachers. Um, he, somebody that, I mean, he actually has a, a, a genuine appreciation for people and women. And um, uh, I mean, there's millions and billions of people out of the world. You got me. There's a couple of people I believe have voices that actually share it. And you get me. Like I don't know. I mean, you have a lot of good things. Maybe I see more in you. But I, I see, you get me what's there. I yeah, appreciate um, it, Noel. That's kind, very kind of you. Jen's you giant, do too. You get me you're, this, comes... you're heading in this path. You know, get you receive something from me, you pass it to others. That's the, that's, yes, the, that's, the... that's what you're doing. Yeah. So good for you. Yeah. Go and do thou likewise. You know, good for you. All right, Zen. You, I'll let you finish the episode. Any messages that you want to share with everybody else, and then I'll I'll finish it there. Okay, I uh, don't think so. I think uh, you know, go find me. I'm easy to find. I'm on this new uh, social media thing called BitClout. Have you heard of that? It's like Twitter, but it's 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 monetized. They I've got an account there. You have your own coin. I have my own coin. Coins. Come, no, I can't say that. Not investment advice. Don't buy my coin. Come follow me. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, but I'm on there and it's interesting and it's a social experiment and it might all go, you know, belly, uh, belly up, but uh, I'm checking it out and investigating it and it's, and it's blockchain, which I really like. So I'm, I'm learning all about, uh, you know, uh, well, I've been very deeply trying to understand crypto for years. I like it very much. You know, I think it's the future. So I like technology, even though I'm very analog, but still. I had a buddy of mine, he ended up becoming like, I have a lot of them. Like one of them is a millionaire. He did Forex. Another one is making like multiple six figures. He, he's making multiple <laughs> six figures now. He's on his way to do that. He loves crypto. He, this, this one's doing That's crypto. good. I like it too. Yeah, I like crypto. Your friend's a good guy. I like it. Good for him that he's getting into it or he's into it. That's cool. <laughs> okay. So that's it. Uh, so thank you for this opportunity to have a conversation with you and your guys. Noel, and I enjoyed it a lot and good questions and you're a good interviewer. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Mr. Perrion. You bet. All right. And guys, this is Dan Noel signing off. We will catch you guys on the next one. Make sure to check out his book. The audio version is going to be coming out very soon. I'm going to be putting a link towards his website where you may be able to get possibly a copy of his book and it might even be signed. So thank you so That's much, great. guys. And have a great rest of your day. See you now.